Every shot tells a story. Some shots are to show a location, while other shots make you feel the emotion of a character. The best filmmakers are masters at knowing how to use these shots to tell a story. Today we're going to break down every one of these shots and how they affect your film. This video is brought to you by our friends over at audio.com, but more on that later. So the first shot that we're going to talk about is what they call an establishing shot. This is typically a shot that shows you an environment or the location that your scene takes place in. Sometimes this could be a drone shot or it could just be a static tripod shot on the ground. But more often than not, the idea is for it to be a wide shot that lets the audience understand and establish where the location that your scene is taking place in. And the way I use establishing shots is either at the beginning or at the end of a scene to transition from one scene to another. Next, we have wide shots. Now, the wide shot is typically captured with a wide angle lens and a lot like an establishing shot it's frequently used to highlight a location or an environment that your subject's in a wide is great for showing multiple characters in a scene and maybe how they're interacting with each other wide shots could also be a great way to showcase how lonely or how isolated a character is in a particular environment and they could also be used to show scale maybe how vast the location is in comparison to the character now a little tighter than the wide and you have yourself a full shot and they call this a full shot because you can see the character's full body in the frame. So the top of the frame might be slightly above the character's head, and then it'll show all the way to the bottom of the character's feet. And a lot like the wide shot, you get a full spectrum of the body language that your character is showing, but you also get a little bit of the environment and showcasing how the character is interacting with their environment. Next, you got probably one of my favorite shot names on this list, and that is the cowboy shot. This shot was used a lot in Westerns because you were able to see just below the waist at the holster of the gun. Now, speaking of cowboys, if you need music for your next cowboy western, head over to audio.com and you can get yourself a track like this. Audio has an incredible music library that they are continuously expanding, and right now you can get a lifetime membership with sound effects included using the link below. So if you guys need music for your next project, check them out. Now, punching in a little bit tighter than the cowboy shot, and you got yourself a medium shot. The medium shot typically is from about the waist up and it's used to focus in on subjects actions or making you really start to pay attention to what they're saying. The medium shot is great to make you feel a little bit closer to the subject. It's great for dialogue and it's great for showing two people interacting and talking to each other. So I would think about using medium shots when you want the audience to pay a little bit closer of attention to what a character is saying or showcase two people having a conversation. Now we are into the medium close up and that is going to be from the bottom of your chest up kind of like what you guys are seeing right now. And a lot like the medium shot, it's great for showing a conversation, but when you wanna start getting a little bit more dramatic and making the audience pay attention to the character just a little bit more, using a medium close-up is a great way to do that. Now the next one on our list is the close-up and the extreme close-up. I'm gonna group both of these together. The close-up shot is a great way to show details like someone's hands or a certain body part. And these shots are typically used with a longer lens, something like an 85 or 100 millimeters. Now, if we're talking about composition of a character in a scene, the close up is typically from the chin to the top of the head. And then you have an extreme close up, which would be something like the nose to the eyes, or maybe just even the eyes. Now, the next shot that we're gonna talk about was something that kind of bewildered me for a long time, and that was the two, the three, and the group shot. I couldn't believe how simple it was, but a two shot is just two people in a shot, a three shot is three people in a shot, and a group shot is just a group of people, several people in a shot. I really thought it was more complicated than that, but it turns out it's not, and uh, yeah. The next shot on our list is an OTS shot, and maybe some of you guys have heard this before, but OTS stands for over the shoulder. And this is probably one of my favorite ways to showcase a conversation, because you have that dramatic kind of shoulder look in the foreground, and then you have the character's face over that, which just gives a little bit more depth and visual interest to the scene. Then we have the POV shot, and the POV stands for point of view, and this is a great way to show a character's perspective in their daily life or a first person view of what this person is going through then you have one of my favorite shots on this list and that is the dutch angle and i think this is a really cool shot because it gives a different weird perspective almost showing you like something bad is about to happen or something is a little bit off about a conversation or about a, a particular scene and how you get the dutch angle is by tilting the camera off its axis so it's kind of tilted either to the left or to the right and it gives this really weird uncomfortable feeling to the frame these shots are great for showing somebody that could be drunk or disoriented or possibly a, a conversation that's really going south 
or something really twisted that's happening in your scene. Then we have the low angle shot, which is a great way to make your subject feel big and powerful. Typically the shot is used in movies to show a character's dominance in a scene. But if the shot is wide enough and you can kind of see the background, it's a great way to show a sense of wonder in a scene like this particular scene in Harry Potter. And then you have the opposite end of the spectrum and that is a high angle shot, which typically makes your character feel vulnerable or weak. This is a great tool to show something like sadness or depression in your character's vulnerable state. Sometimes I use this in interviews when I want to ask somebody really intrusive questions, or sometimes I'll use this to show a character's weakness in a scene. So that pretty much wraps up today's video. I wanna thank you guys so much for stopping in and hanging out. If you guys have any questions or have any comments about anything that we talked about today, drop them in the comments down below and uh, I'll try to get back to you guys as soon as possible. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next week.